Good afternoon. Welcome to our four lane QuickBooks Enterprise Inventory Tieout Webinar. I am so glad that you joined me today to talk about this topic. It is something that I have enjoyed talking about forever, and I can always talk about inventory. So hopefully we will be able to learn a lot today and use these tips and tricks for the future. Our inventory tie-out in QuickBooks Enterprise. You know, a lot of um, my clients, they are afraid of inventory. It is something, uh, not just clients too. I think sometimes consultants come in and uh, they don't have QuickBooks uh, inventory experience. It is okay. It's really not something to be afraid of, but a lot of times people will ask, well, what am I gonna tie out to? You mean I have to go do a physical count just because we're gonna tie out inventory? Absolutely not, absolutely not. Now, we can do those things, a physical inventory count, cycle counts, when you get done with those things and making those adjustments in QuickBooks, you always wanna make sure that your inventory is tied out to the balance sheet. So two things that you wanna remember, and this is the easy part. I need two things. I need my balance sheet inventory value, and I need my inventory valuation summary to tie. If those things tie, then we are good, right? That's our objective. Okay, so now hopefully y'all got a little kick out of my inventory massive undertaking here because I want y'all to know that we're gonna work really, uh, really in QuickBooks Enterprise and we're gonna work through how do we truly manage and do all these things that are sometimes very scary to um, clients and consultants, but they're not. We're, we're going to show you that hopefully today. Okay, so in QuickBooks um, Enterprise 2024 sample file is what you should be able to see on my screen. We want to first go into our item list. So I'm gonna go into our item list and in our item list, we have open. And so this is our very first thing that we really have to establish um, when we get in, uh, you know, into managing our inventory, our transactions have to have items. So all of these things have to be done first, right? So coming into our item list, I always like to go into our item listing report. This item listing report, I um, it's like my go-to, right? A lot of times people don't use this and they'll go through a lot of steps to be able to identify these things that I'm showing you now. But our goal is to make sure that our inventory is set up properly. It is going to the right accounts in the right bucket. We're about to make some modifications to this report here. And if those things are set up properly, then when we have our transactions in our day-to-day -day lives, it should be recording everything that we want it to record in the right place. And it should then tie out to our inventory valuation. So let's go in. And if you've got your QuickBooks open, let's go ahead and customize this report so that we can include active status. And let's see, I want to take off several things, okay? So I'm going to add account. I'm gonna take off quantity on hand. We could leave that, let's just leave that. And take off unit of measure set, price, 
I'm going to add my asset account and my cost of goods sold account. Everything else that is standard on here, I want it to go away. I just want to see the things that I want to see. Now I'm going to go to my filters tab. It is already defaulted to just show you active status, okay? So what we want to do, because we want to be able to see active and inactive. So let's click on all. And our item list is including all items. So it's going to get inventory, non-inventory, service. It's going to get all the things except the fixed assets. Okay. So I'm going to leave it on that setting and say, okay, now I've got fewer columns. I can see everything that I need to see. I did keep these quantities on here because sometimes what will happen is people will inactivate inventory and they'll still have a quantity and value on hand, okay? So you will be able to see if you have an inactive item because we included that column and if you've got a quantity on hand. Okay, other places to see that too, but just thought I would share that um, on this report. So let's go ahead and export this to Excel. Now, do we have to export to Excel? No, but I also know that sometimes it's hard um, to see things on webinars and things like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and export this to Excel. I do wanna give a couple of tips just in case you aren't familiar with exporting to Excel. So I'm gonna export to a new workbook. I like to go into advanced down here and I like to remove spaces between columns. That's a default. And then I also, it, remove the box that's checked, include the export guide. I'm pretty good. I already know how to export because that's what I'm doing now. So I remove it. Okay. So export this. It's going to open up in Excel. And now I've got my inventory item list exported. I already had one. So I kind of just updated this and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger for you guys. And what we want to do is we want to sort first by our asset account. So if I sort by asset account, I am going to be able to quickly see if there's any items hitting asset account that shouldn't be here. I'm also, going to see items that are coded to the wrong account. So if we see these items here, just hide this description so we can see it a little bit larger on the screen. So these two inventory parts, it looks like someone was in a hurry and cost of goods sold all the way across. Maybe they were just handing out cost of goods sold accounts that day. You get cost of goods sold account, you, you, you. So what do we need to do? Because we for sure do not want our value on the P&L, right? Our profit and loss. We want that on the balance sheet. That is an asset to us. So we know for sure that we've got to change this because that needs to be an asset account. Our cost of goods sold, we got that one correct, but guess what? We also got our account incorrect. Not sure if you um, are familiar when it just says account, what that means in all item types, but for inventory parts and assemblies, this is the revenue or the sales account. So you want this account to always be one of those uh, revenue account types, okay? I can easily see 
looking at because now got another one right here, but I can easily see we've, we've got another one. So now that I've got my asset accounts pretty good, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for my cost of goods sold. Oh, first one on, or first three, I should say, on here are WIP, and they're going to work in progress. Now I'm gonna go look at my chart of accounts and I'm gonna see it doesn't say inventory. So maybe I need to confirm that this is not going to affect my inventory. I'm gonna highlight this in orange, okay? I'm also gonna keep going down the list and it looks like I have everything else in the right place. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sort on my account, my sales account, my revenue account. Oh, should not say inventory. So I have got this materials inventory for my motor that cannot go there. It is going to cause an out of balance when I record an invoice for this item. It is not going to hit the sales account, but instead it's going to hit my inventory account. And then this thing right here, that can't be right. I can't have a non-inventory hitting my finished goods inventory account. Why would anyone think that we would not want non-inventory item type to hit an inventory account? Well, let me tell you, the inventory valuation summary report inside of QuickBooks only tracks quantity and value for inventory parts and inventory assembly items. No other item, regardless if you code it to an inventory account, will be tracked on that inventory evaluation summary report, okay? So item types are very, very important. Inventory parts and inventory assemblies are tracked on the inventory evaluation report, okay? So we've got these items here that we definitely have hitting the wrong places. So if we sort by color, now I actually have five, five, and then these three that I need to take a look at, okay? So now that I've got these five, I need to go look at my chart of accounts. It's a little bit of accounting stuff that we've got going on. And if I had the items set up properly, we wouldn't even have to go look at my chart of accounts to confirm my whip, right? So that base foundation of setting up your item is so, so very important, which is why we're spending a little bit of time on that today. All right, so my chart of accounts. I want to look at this with you guys because I want to be able to see how the whip is set up, where is my inventory, sort by this, where is my inventory account and where is this WIP account, right? So I have a 1200 inventory account. I've got WIP, it's not included in there, materials and finished goods inventory. Well, I'm just gonna say that I highly recommend to have an inventory parent account and if I'm going to have more than one inventory account, which is materials inventory and a finished goods inventory. Now you don't have to, you can just have one, but this chart of accounts has that already set up. So I would recommend that there's nothing in this inventory account. We should make that our parent and we should edit these so that they are sub accounts of this inventory account, okay? So I'm gonna do that on both of these now.
they do um, in order to change accounts on items you have to be in single user mode which i know not everybody loves but it's a good way to tell the company to take a lunch break and you can switch single user mode make the changes and then everyone can get back in right so now we have an inventory section we've got whip they have nothing to do with each other so our items that we highlighted in orange they're okay so we're gonna unhighlight those i am a color coder and i am going to focus on yellow these are the things that i got problems with okay so going back into our chart of accounts our inventory is looking good i want to go run my balance sheet report so reports company and financials balance sheet now balance sheet as of today the date is very important okay we're going to run this as of today and it is a cruel basis not cash basis so I can now see I have a total inventory value on my balance sheet of 141,757 and some change. All right, let's go compare that to our inventory valuation summaries. Okay, now this is a sample file. It's got a ton of things turned on. And so you'll see a lot of different, you know, it's got lot numbers and serials and all the things, but we're just tying out at the item level right now. Okay, so same date, I got my date here, and I can include the box to show inactive inventory items. Okay, this will include, if they have a value, it'll show up here. So I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and I'm gonna see, uh oh, I got a different number and that's 166,748 and some change. So I definitely need to figure out what is happening. All right, if y'all don't remember anything else, this next report, it is one that you can use anywhere, all the time. Okay, so what we are going to do is I have an inventory item list at the item level and I've got a, a financial balance sheet account at the account level. How am I supposed to compare items when the reports don't do that, right? They're not even in the same type, okay? So this is what we call the no item report. So we're gonna go to reports. We're gonna go to custom reports and summary. So now what we have is we've got this custom summary modify report box. This is where the magic happens. So we're gonna go to the from or on the from date, we're gonna just hit delete because I need this to be for all time, okay? Now the two date has to be the same date that we ran our balance sheet and our inventory valuation summary for. What we're gonna do on our display rows is we're gonna take this drop down and we're gonna remove the income statement and we're going to do item detail and i like to see both the quantity and the dollar amount so i'm going to click on display columns for both okay give you a little tip you can hit this advanced button here and you can click on non-zeros if you have 25,000 SKUs in your item list and you don't want to see all those zeros this is your saving grace right non-zeros but if you need those items to be there because maybe 
they have the wrong account codes, some of those things, then you can leave it and show active or all. Okay, we're just gonna do non-zero for now. And then I'm gonna go to the filters tab. The filters tab is very important because you've got your accounts already set from when the report first opened up. And so the reason why we went through all the item lists first and the account codes and the chart of accounts is because you have to know when you're running this report where are your items coded. I need to know what accounts I need to pull onto this report to display my item quantity and value to go compare to my evaluation summary, okay? So that's the reason why we did it the way we did it. I'm gonna go to multiple accounts and I'm gonna come click on my inventory, my finished goods, and my materials inventory report because these are the ones that are included in my item codings and where my balance sheet should be, okay? All right, so we're gonna say okay here and now this is our no item report, all right? Trying to hurry, I got about five minutes. I know that there is a little bit of some sound stuff um, and I wanted to make sure that everyone could hear me. So I might go a few minutes over, um, but I wanna make sure that we can get through this, okay? So now I've got items and I've got quantity and value. I can totally take this, export it to Excel, and I can do a VLOOKUP and compare at the item level, right? And this is what is representing my balance sheet amount, okay? Now, I wanna show you some things because you may not have to go do all that craziness in Excel and all the things. This is where you can see I've got a total inventory value and I've got a total assembly value. Now remember, we had an item that we highlighted earlier and it was a pallet and it's going to the wrong place. We gotta go fix this because that pallet, that's a non-inventory part it doesn't show up on the inventory valuation summary, so we got to go get rid of that. But what in the world is this no item number? I'm going to double click on that, and these are all the transactions that took place at all time through our date in the file that did not have an item, but it is coded to one of our inventory accounts. So now I have the ability to see and go fix, right? So I first wanna go look at my inventory adjustment. Why in the world would my inventory adjustment be an offset to inventory? Believe it or not, this happens a lot. And a lot of times people don't understand why we don't do this. So I'm gonna show you the journal entry behind this. It might be a little bit of accounting, um, but I just want you to know the why behind it, right? So you can see I have an item. See my item here? This is my item. And I'm taking all these dollars and I have no item and a big amount of 82,000 bucks. What did I do? I literally took my quantity and value at the item level and I said, I need to bring you in so you have a quantity and a, and a value, but my offset is gonna go where? To inventory was no item. And now I, my subledger can't be in balance, okay? So all we have to do here is, hmm, let's go put this to the cost of goods sold. And it, could be inventory adjustment, it could be somewhere along the lines, but when you're bringing in inventory, normally you purchased it and then that cost went somewhere, okay? So we're gonna move that here for right now and magically it's gone, right? 
Okay, so here we have an invent or oh, whip, this is a journal entry. And I love these. This is our CPA end of year adjustment. And you know what? Working at a CPA firm, I get it a hundred percent. And you know what? Yes, we want you to have your financials properly stated, but this is causing that out of balance. And hopefully we're not just throwing stuff to retained earnings, right? And so this is a reason for us to do a cycle counts throughout the year. This is the reason why we would want to do an inventory adjustment at year end at the item level. Okay. If you have this, we can um, reverse it and then do a physical inventory count at the same, you know, time or like next step. Okay. So reversing this at the same date, that's going to allow for this to zero out. Okay. Now I've got two bills. These bills are for things that should have had an item most likely. And if it wasn't at the item level, it probably should have gone to a cost of goods sold if we would have sold it. Now I'm just doing high level um, scenarios and examples, but these are the things that happen all the time. Materials inventory, and if I sold these, they already went out the door, they should have probably hit cost of goods sold materials. But because I didn't have it at the item level, it isn't going to work out that way. So now I see a zero in this new item report. Now my numbers starting to look a little bit better to that inventory valuation. And so I do have this item that's in the wrong place. I'm going to go to my item and I'm going to go to the palette. And we've got to figure out where this should go, which if it's a non inventory item shouldn't be on the balance sheet and maybe it is a material right? If it's part of my manufacturing process. And so when I update that, it now is going to go back to my custom summary report. It is now going to show my number has changed and that no item report is that section is gone, right? And so now I'm getting much closer to where I'm supposed to be. On my item listing, and I'm going to go here because I want to be able to show you these other things. So we have uh, two other things that need to be changed, and this is our cells. We need this to go to a revenue account, right? So I'm just going to pick one, and we're going to update this. And so as you can see, it is updating. I am changing this for all time, all right? So we have now fixed our items. This is our whip, everything was good there. When I go back to here, I am good. I don't have any that are incorrect. And then I'm gonna sort just by got these two and these need to go to inventory materials and I am almost done guys can hang on one more minute I should be good oops I forgot to change that revenue let's go back and change it this needs to go to income okay so now that I've got all of these things done I should have inventory in a state where it is going to be able to tie out, right? So now I'm at 166, 748, 20. My inventory valuation, 166, 748, 20. My balance sheet, just to show you guys, 166, 748, 20. So I know I went over just a little bit. I appreciate it. Thanks for everyone hanging in. I hope that today you were able to really understand that inventory tie-out, it's not, it is not terrifying. And I hope that you see how simple it is.
Thank you guys so much. I hope that you have a wonderful day.